Welcome back to the top players of 2023. And before you yell at me after you look at the thumbnail, here are the rules for how I determine my top players into my top 10 slash 11, I guess. Shout out to LJ. Uh, basically, 3v3 only, mostly ROCS focused. I'm not really concerned about anything else. And number two, one player per team, unless a player was on maybe multiple rosters. Um, that way we can diversify the top 10 a little bit more, talk about more teams, talk about more players, so on and so forth. Um, so let's get right into it because it's weird because I can't unveil these or unveil these, I guess you would say, uh, because you see it in the thumbnail itself. Uh, but I went back and forth between five and six. I knew I wanted these guys. I just didn't know which order I wanted to put them in. But I came down to it and we went with apparently Jack at rank six um it's kind of hard because obviously this comes down to uh just this year so that kind of hurts him a little bit because of the fall major championship um but basically when it mattered most apparently jack at least on the field at majors would show up i think spring obviously was kind of uh middle in uh but they did squeak in to the major and then became again the number one na team there uh winter was like so so as well it wasn't that great um worlds again like they survived to make it the top eight which was i guess quality enough but that's something you expected out of them right they there was never um they never hit the heights that they hit in the fall so it's kind of hard to rank him he's obviously the team leader over there there are maybe some small arguments for a chronic instead uh but they're very very small uh, apparently jack he led this team he uh, turned this team great basically but a lot of that was in fall so it's a little bit hard to determine now of course going into this next year of rlcs we won't have that problem as much and honestly i could have done it for the full calendar year and even if i did that or the full RLCS year, I should say. But even if I did that, I think apparently Jack moves up maybe one spot to five. I don't think he moves up much past that because you would probably wait more of the um, of how good a player is based on towards the end of the year, right? Because that's where it really matters. Uh, but apparently Jack, number three, goals per game in winter for the winter major. Number six, in assists per game in spring. He's always like up there on the offensive side somewhere. He finds a way to be involved on the offensive side of the field. Obviously, we know he's a great defender as well, so he can do it all. Number one, um, and then third in the winter and spring shots per game. So again, he's on the offensive side trying to apply a lot of pressure. That is what apparently Jack does. Usually it turns into a, um, at least an assist on those shots per game. That's where you'll see those converted in spring. And then number two uh, goals per game uh, at the spring major. Number five in shooting percentage as well. So spring major was one of those. We didn't know what we were going to get out of a Gen G. And then they came through with a, a excellent lower bracket run. Uh, even taking out Team Liquid. Um, so they kind of righted a lot of wrongs there. But at the end of the day, Europe were kings. And I want to talk about that right now because this is the last na player on here and uh europe absolutely dominated the calendar year of 2023 and um it wasn't even close for this whole top 11 we had what one and one na born player in the top 10 at least with first killer i guess two with lj in the top 11 uh oh no atomic was there too never mind never mind so we did get three so at least we got three, but still, this is where the NA list ends, and this is where the European domination comes in. We haven't had any Europeans outside of CRR, but that doesn't really count. Um, yet, yeah, there's been no Europeans yet. There's been uh, Killers, Amina, and uh, yeah, it's about it in CRR, but he's playing in NA. So, it is time, and it's hard to, I guess, when there is such a strong four teams in Europe, it is very difficult to rank anyone else in Europe. Like a Joyo, I think I saw a lot of people had him on my list. And I just couldn't see a way to put him on the list because he just didn't have much success in Europe. But again, that's because of the quality of the opposition. But sometimes that's the way it is, right? If you're going to play teams that are insane in your region, 
you're not going to see a lot of success. So it's going to be a little bit tough to make one of these lists. But apparently Jack, ranking number six. Quality ranking, I think next year with Gen G. There's potential that they're uh, Europe beaters. I am not completely sold yet, but we haven't really seen this roster yet. They're waiting until next year to perform, so we'll see how that all goes. I'm excited for the roster. I think it's a very good roster. I think it's the best in NA, but can they take out the European best? Time will tell. Moving on. Let's go to Addo. So let's talk about Addo here real quick because one thing that always happens in Rocket League is we have these demo specialists and usually they're not that good. All right. They're not that they're not at all good, that they're not world's best good in terms of other positions on the field. And this is no slight against them. It's just usually if you have a demo heavy player, you're not going to see him racking up goals uh, and assists because he's got to do all the demos. Right. So you're just not going to see it as much. You usually don't see them with the flashy mix as often. They have it in their toolkits sometimes. Um, but Addo kind of brings the, the best of both worlds. He can uh, demo like crazy to open up the field and just gain pressure through that. But he's also just a mechanical beast. And he puts up goals and assists. So he's like on that goals and assists like tally marker. Like, he's usually top 10 in every event that he does. So, he puts it together on all uh, facets of the field. But the one thing I love is the demolitions that lead to goals. But even on top of that, to still have the tally marks to do it. So, Addo, let's talk about his numbers real quick. We talk about... There's a lot of demo kings. And I don't think Addo gets a lot of credit here for his demolitions. But... You want to look at it, number one in demos per game at the main event, the World Championship main event. He was at 3.4. The next highest was 2.7. Huge, huge gap there. He was number 15 in tally at the main event, which is not that high, but it was still higher than both of his teammates. So while he's getting all these demos to probably open up goals for his teammates, normally not going to be on those score sheets. He's still putting up other goals and assists. Uh, elsewhere, so that's huge. Spring Major, number one in assists per game by a gap of 0.16. Huge gap in assists per game. The next highest, like if you took that 0.16 gap, would go to 11th. Uh, so absolutely huge. He dominated there. And on top of that, demos per game still, number two per game. Only behind, I think, Drew Fino, who only played six games, if I'm not mistaken, or maybe seven, uh, but only two series. Um, and then Tally, he was tied for fourth for the entire event, but he was tied with all his teammates as well. So, yet again, when you demo, you're not going to be on the score sheet m most often on a goal or assist. Like, obviously not a goal, uh, like assist occasionally, but not that often. So, huge, huge numbers there. Winter Major, tied for fourth in goals per game, number one in demos again, and Tally, he was at number four. Again. He does it all. He does it all for Team Liquid. Team Liquid was one of those teams, very similar to Complexity, where we thought there was so much more potential that it, it was just barely not reached. They're a tier above Complexity uh, with their results, but they were close to being one of the world's best teams. They just couldn't get over that European hump. So we'll see what Addo's got in store for us next year. But for this year, I really enjoyed the demolition work. And it came to a player that was also so mechanically good and still putting up huge, huge numbers. You don't see that very often. I had him uh, below, apparently, Jack, for a while. But because of those demos, and we need to just glorify that more. It's just so impressive what he did to put up those numbers while also demoing. Absolutely insane. Addo, a fantastic year for him. I expect great things out of him next year. We'll see what happens. I want to see more demos. I want to see him get up to like four demos per game. Uh, but that's going to do it for today. We have Addo and apparently Jack at number five and six. We only have four left. Let me know what you think the four are. I bet everyone will guess who the four are. I've already given hints on one of them. But what order? might surprise you. So check it out tomorrow. Thank you guys for watching and see you later.